The following is part two with an interview with Ron Hubbard, the owner of Atlas Survival Shelters. Check out part one by clicking the link in the upper right hand corner of this video or through the link in the description. So I was fortunate enough to meet up with Ron Hubbard, the founder and owner of the Atlas Survival Shelter Company. They're one of the largest bunker building companies in the world. He agreed to sit down and do an interview to talk about all the ins and outs of building bunkers. So let's get to it. If you want to save 5% off one of these bunkers, tell Ron Canadian Prepper sent you. And be sure to go out and check out Atlas Survival's awesome YouTube channel. You won't regret it. It, it sounds like you've really, you know, thought about this from most angles, so... Well, there's not a lot of people that do it, but it's all I do. I live, breathe, eat, drink, sleep, the bunker business. I mean, I'm into it. I'm a prepper up and down, sideways, up, you know, any direction you want. Like you, you, you don't have the bunkers, but you have all the supplies. So it's like, I want to know a lot of the stuff that you know. <laughs> and you're trying to learn some of the stuff that I know. Yeah. But uh, that's why I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hoarding all the stuff that for my little prepper community that I'm doing in California. Uh, and I'm enjoying it. So people yeah. got to realize this because you have a bunker. doesn't. You don't have to be crazy to have a bunker. You just got to be concerned and willing to spend some extra money for some insurance. So for a person who had an average size house, say in suburbia, if they already had a home but they wanted to, to get a bunker... You got to put it in the backyard. I, you cannot go underneath the house. Yeah. Now, you, you'll you'll uh, you'll mess up the footer, the house could settle, the windows would all rack. No, I'm not going underneath the house. The closest I can do to it is that they have a basement. We can put a bunker out in the yard and attach the entrance to the basement wall. Okay, that's... Yeah, but we have to have the engineer sign off on that. Yeah, that that's part of the NATO series, like the Y NATO, but it's just a uh, a basement entrance. I have those going for new construction now. The the, the main thing people need to do if you're going to want a bunker, plan for it in advance, and then get it built into the body of the house because it's the cheapest way to do it, and it's always there, and it's always going to add value to the house. No one's going to say, oh, I wish I didn't have a secret entrance to a secret room. Yeah. No, it's quite those, the opposite. It's one of those things, you, you know, you've shown somebody the house, and after they've seen everything, and you say, oh, there's one more thing you should see. And, and I guess, and what you know what they always say? Wow. Exactly. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. That's, that's the wife might not uh, Look, every, appreciate every, it that much, but the husband sure will. I think. Yeah. In terms of, like, this uh, psychology of staying inside of a bunker, uh, what do you know about that and is that something which you would provide people education or direction on? I spent 11 days in a bunker to see it, what, what it was like. When did you do that? I did that December, uh, December 21st, 2012 or during the Mayan calendar deal okay. and um, it wasn't like I was down there like without interference because all the news media was lined up. Good Morning America, The Today Show, Neil Cavuto, Fox, everyone. And they're all, do because I, I was the only person they knew in America that was gonna spend that day in the bunker. Well, you know, so I came out and said, well, you know, so how often do you get to spend a day in your bunker? So I was gonna treat it like a holiday. So, so uh, uh, Good Morning America would show up and they get their trucks all ready and their, all their radars and stuff. and. You know, and they would come down and do the interview from within the bunker. So we're opening it. So there was people coming in out. It wasn't like it was 11 days and I was isolated. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, staying down in the bunker like that, um, there was things I liked and things I didn't like about the bunker I did at that time. I put that bunker in in like 2011 or early 2012. I liked the corrugated pipe because it had no echo, so the sound was good. There's not the worst in getting in a square bunker or a round bunker. Any bunker that has smooth walls has an echo inside it, and it drives you fruity sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, the way you get kill the sound is by adding couches like this and carpet. It absorbs the sound, and so you don't have the echoes off the wall. But if you go into a hollow bunker without anything in it, it's like, hello, 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 hello. It's like so loud you can't even talk. I, a, after that, I added doors, okay? Um, because too much time in a confined space with people is annoying. And the one thing you're looking for is some privacy. Mm -hmm. 
just any amount of privacy, whether it's going to the bathroom and closing a door or going into a bedroom and closing a door. So immediately after that, I added doors on all the bunkers. So there's three doors now. There's a door into the master bedroom, a door into the bunk room, and a, and a door into the bathroom. So I added doors. It's a, it's, it's a psychological deal having a door between you and somebody on the outside. Right. You know what I mean? Big time. Yeah. I changed the floors from linoleum to, to, uh, to laminated oak. I changed the door from a bulletproof door to a gas tight door. Other than that, the original design pretty much worked from beginning. Um, but I just made a few improvements that I felt they weren't necessary, but I just felt like I wanted to make them to make it nicer. The bunker I make today costs more than the bunker back then, but um, there's not really anything I can do. Even the wood that we use in there is like a pressure treated or, or dried hemp, so it won't mold. And if you add copper sulfate to the paint, mold will not grow on copper sulfate. So there's a lot of tricks. People say, well, if you make a bunker, you put it down, you're gonna get mold. Not necessarily, because I went into a bunker and I made a YouTube video called uh, Revealing revealing a hidden modern day bunker or something on the Atlas Survival Shelter channel. And that bunker was eight years old and it smelled new. It's amazing. I was like, God, this thing smells brand new. So you know, mold proof, corrosion resistant. Galvanized protects you from the rust. Dried hemp or pressure treated protects you from uh, mold or rot. Um, galvanized bolts protects you from rust. I mean, I make these bunkers to last a hundred years, not two years, and then they're rusted out and flooded. To last longer than the house, it sounds like. Well, if you build a house on top of them, they gotta last the life of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to do it right, it costs a little extra money. Nice. Yeah. So what makes your company different from other companies who might be doing this out there? I know there's not many, but what what makes your approach different, do you think? Well, first of all, I make round, square, all type, I make every type of bunker. Mm -hmm. If you only made one type of bunker, let's say it's a square bunker, um, you're gonna have a, a biased opinion towards your own bunker. Yeah. And they'll say, well, square's better than round. And if you only make a round bunker, you're gonna say round's better than square, which is actually true, okay? A round bunker will actually go deeper and is stronger and everything about round. That's why you see tunnels under the city and not squares, okay? okay. The air systems I get from Switzerland, the galvanization, the warranty, the service, the morals. I won't sell anybody a bunker that doesn't need it. If some old lady and says, oh, I think Trump's gonna kill us tomorrow, I'm gonna buy a bunker. I won't sell her a bunker. I'm like, lady, come on, chill out. Or if it's their last dollar. Like, this, if you have anywhere from 30,000 to $200,000 to get a luxury bunker, that you just have to have it and it's the coolest thing you're ever gonna have, get one, it's fun. And then pray that you never need it. I hope nobody ever has to use one of my bunkers. Unfortunately, they're all going to get tested one day. I just don't hope it's in my lifetime, but the way the world's going right now, it could happen tomorrow. You never know. Mm -hmm. Trump could start a fight with North Korea again, and North Korea's not doing what they said they would do. So we could go back to the tensions that we had a year ago. Yeah. You know? Well, it's good, and it's nice to see that somebody, especially in that business, has that kind of integrity. It's one of those businesses where you could probably, um, you know, use deceptive marketing to encourage people to, to buy things well, that they might not necessarily need. I, I wouldn't be creating bunkers for under $20,000 if I wasn't trying to help the average guy. My, my client tells the average guy, you and me, okay, these guys that are buying these multi-million dollar bunkers made of concrete. They're hiring big giant contractors to do most of that stuff. And then they'll come to me and say, make the doors and make the air pipes and buy the air system. But they'll just pour six foot thick concrete walls. They don't need me to do that. That's just a general contractor to do that. But they're gonna spend a lot of money on that. And they'll ask us to do the engineering and design it and how the systems go. Yeah. There is a lot more to a bomb shelter than people could think. And it's not just a, a pipe or a, a shipping container underground with two pipes sticking out. You, that will just kill you. That's just a coffin. You've got to do the air systems a certain way, okay? Um, there's a lot of things you have to do a certain way or it just isn't going to work, okay? So what about water? Have you, do you make bunkers that tap into groundwater for a source of water? 
I don't make shelters that tap into water, but I've seen people drill wells and then have the water spout run up into the bunker mm -hmm. so they can access water from underground. But you see, if you have a high water table, you can't put in a, uh, like a culvert bunker. You can't put it in a high water table like Florida or Houston, mm -hmm. Texas, because it, it would just flood. Right. Um, they're classified as waterproof, but not watertight. Um, if you're what's, gonna, what's the difference? Just well, one's a submarine. Okay, like a boat. Water a boat is waterproof, but if you flip it over, it will sink. Okay, okay a submarine is watertight because it's made to go underwater. Okay, so when I do a watertight shelter, it's all welded construction. It's either square or round, but it's all welded seams. The culvert pipe, which is the most popular bunker and this is one the military uses, um, is strong because it can go up to 42 feet underground, where most of the square shelters are only rated to go up to like four to six feet max underground. So you can go, what's that, seven times further underground um, with a round shelter than you can with a square shelter. So if you have a choice, you want a round shelter. Have you ever seen a square submarine? No. <laughs> have you ever seen a square airplane fuselage? Have you ever seen a square bullet? Probably. There's a reason why they're round. They can handle the pressure, mm -hmm. okay? Submarines can go deep underground because they're round. Airplanes can go high up in the air and they fly faster through the air because they're round. The circle, the Roman arch in the, is, this, is a great design and it's, any engineer will tell you round, stronger, and square. Now you can take a square and you can make it so fortified that it would be stronger than the corrugated pipe because you added 10 foot of concrete. Yeah. But pound for pound, same diameter per diameter, you can take a toilet paper roll and you can put it in the ground, a toilet paper roll, which you can squat with your fingers. But if you put it in the ground and you tamper the earth around it, every half inch as you put dirt around it and then cover it with dirt and pound it, you can stand on top of it and you can't crush it. Right. So there's no strength in the corrugated pipe itself. Zero strength. You can crush it. What the corrugated pipe is for is to allow the earth to compact around it and then dispense the energy. Oh, I see. You see, where a square bunker is designed to hold everything up. So all the pressures on the bunker, where a round bunker, all the pressures on the earth. That's neat. Yeah. So when the energy goes off, it dispenses the energy into the ground. Where the square one, if you get enough energy, it would flatten it. I you could just flatten it. It, it. A square bunker underground is no different than a square bunker above ground. When the energy comes down on it, it will just flatten it, pancake it. Well, where the round one, when it hits it, it will dispense it, like, like an airplane going through the air. You see the airwaves going around it. it so that's why every if you Google bomb shelter, Every bunker that's going to pop up is going to be a round bunker. Okay. Okay. So, but somebody came up with the idea to start making square bunkers, and I do it now too because they just want they want the square walls. Right. But it's not as strong as. Oh God, no! Not even close. But it feels more like a house. Right. The shape doesn't matter if it's only a fallout shelter. Right. All you're trying to do is keep three foot of earth between you and the outside. That's all a fallout shelter is. Yeah. Three feet of earth will protect you from the alpha, the beta, and the gamma radiation. Mm -hmm. Primarily the gamma radiation, you need three feet of earth. Right. To keep the alpha radiation off, you just need a piece of paper. Right. It, it won't even penetrate a piece of paper. Uh, beta radiation will be stopped by a piece of glass or even plywood. Yeah. Okay, so the alpha and beta, which is what's emitted after fallout hits the ground, can be protected by just the roof of a house. That's why a fallout shelter doesn't have to be fortified, and that's why it could have PVC air pipes. But a bomb shelter is designed to take pressure from a bomb, so then it's going to have the pressure on it. So that's why bomb shelters are going to be round and fallout shelters will be square. So if you want a bomb shelter, you want it to be round. If you want a fallout shelter, it can be any shape you want, including square. It doesn't matter. It's not designed to take the pressure of the bomb. How long could a person stay in one of your best bunkers? Like how long? As long as the food and water lasts and they have power. And how do you power the bunker? Um, there's, there's a few options. Um, we can do an underground generator, diesel generator, just like in a boat. Yeah. A shelter has a lot of similarities like it than a sailboat. When a sailboat crosses the ocean, it's off-grid. It has a diesel generator for running the prop. It has wind for, for the sails, but it has a little propeller always running too to charge batteries, you know, for solar power, uh, not for solar, for wind power. Yeah. 
So a shelter has a lot of similarities as a sailboat. When you go underground, you're off grid, okay? So you can either have solar, you can have a, a EMP proof hardened solar system, which I recommend from a company called Solar, okay? I'll plug them for that. But you either do a solar system or you do a diesel generator underground. If you do a diesel generator underground, you're getting into the high dollar stuff, but the high dollar stuff always have a diesel generator underground. If you're into a low rent, uh, or not a low rent, but if you're in a low cost shelter that costs say $20,000, you typically get like one of those things you have in your car, the, ener the energy thing yeah. with the solar panel. Yeah, you run it on that. Look, people really, they need to understand this. That if a bomb goes off and the fallout lands on you, that 24 hours after that fallout lands on you, 90% of it's decayed. Okay, in seven days, 94 or is it 97 percent of it's decayed in seven days and then in 28 days it's like 99 percent decayed okay so the 24 hours is the most important time to be in your shelter because 90 percent of that radiation is decayed and you could actually leave your bunker get out of the area and get minimal radiation sickness and just because you get radiation sickness doesn't mean you die it just means it makes you sick you throw up and then you get healed again See, so many people were affected by Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but they're alive today still. Mm -hmm. and, and they got burns and stuff, and you're like, why is that? Well, the radiation from a nuclear bomb is a lot different than a, a Chernobyl, okay? That's a nuclear meltdown, okay? It'll be thousands of years before that's ever inhabited again. But when a nuclear bomb goes off, it, 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 it's like a firecracker. It blows up in the sky. They don't do a ground. If, they do, if it hits the ground, that's bad because it will put radiation into the soil for five to seven years. But if it blows up in the sky, it pretty much disintegrates up in the air and then the fallout hits the ground. But after 28 days, that fallout's pretty much decayed and you can basically go back to a somewhat of a normal life because most of it's decayed. This is why 65 miles from Las Vegas, Nevada, they've tested like 100 nuclear bombs. Yet there's two million people in Las Vegas now and no one's ever got sick, sick from radiation. Why is that? Because it, the bombs that they're testing, it blows up, it's gone. Yeah. So the good news about nuclear war is, is that it's very survivable. Okay? Except, except the issue of the nuclear power plants. The big threat, the biggest threat is nuclear power plants. You don't want to be living within 30, 40 miles of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those, the, the, when those melt down, the bunker's not even going to help you. You would have to leave your bunker because that whole area is contaminated. Just look at Chernobyl. You know they tried to build that coffin around Chernobyl, and and uh, that's just a mess right there. But um, no, when they do the nuclear, when they did the, the testing with the nuclear bombs, those areas now you can go into them, but you can't go around Chernobyl uh, for well, people go in there for. They go in there for a couple hours and they come out, but uh, um, people don't need to understand the difference between a nuclear bomb and a nuclear meltdown, the difference between a fallout shelter, a bomb shelter, and a fortress, okay? And I will do a better job explaining to more people in the future on my website, because uh, they think every shelter I make is a fortress, and it's not. It's designed for a purpose, for fallout in a tornado or a tornado, or if it's a bomb shelter, it's designed for bombs, fallout, and a tornado. And if it's a fortress, it just, it's designed for intruders, bombs, fallout, and whatever disaster. Okay? So they, they're trying to treat every bunker I make as a fortress, and it's not very few bunkers I make are fortresses. And so on the issue of water then, let's say, would it just be the water that you had uh, stored, or would you? Would there be a water source which is external to the bunker? Uh, most people will store the water in the bunker that they have. Uh, they'll put 55-gallon drums under the water under the floor, yeah. uh, or they'll put a 2,500-gallon water tank on the exterior with a flexible hose in case the ground moves. Oh, he just tapped the camera again and went back. So they'll put a 55-gallon, 2,500-gallon water tank underground uh, on the outside. Uh, a few people, if they can drill a water well, which costs about 20, 30,000 bucks sometimes, or less, it depends on the depth of the water, but they can drill a well and they can run the spigot up through the middle of the bunker and have water 
directly into the bunker. But there's no reason for anybody to have to stay down in a bunker longer than 28 days. So these people who think they need to stay in a bunker for a year or two are, are crazy. Okay, there's no reason to really be in a bunker any longer. You, you will be in a bunker anywhere from one to 30 days. So on my company team truck, it has number 30. You know what the 30 represents? The 30 days max you'd have to spend in a bunker in case of a nuclear war. Now, the only thing that would change that is if one bomb came and then another bomb came 26 days later, yeah. then you have to go through it all over again, okay? So people don't need to be in a bunker any longer than 30 days max. That's it, because the radiation is so depleted that it's not gonna be dangerous to you. So Hollywood is to blame for all this crap and hype that they've made out about it's the end of the, that is the, that is the end of the world. If somebody ordered a bunker, what's the time frame getting that done? Right now. Um, it depends on the bunker they get. Some bunkers were starting to stock. Mm -hmm. um, the culvert bunkers, I, I keep anywhere from 10 to 15 in stock. The, uh, the smaller bunkers that go underneath the house, we're trying to stock them. But right now, if you're going to put a bunker under the house, try to plan three to four months out in advance. Okay, to play it safe because we actually have a waiting list for people to get bunkers. Um, and um, until our production is up to speed with the new plant that we're putting in Texas, um, we're having to make everything one off instead of on an assembly line. But we're hoping that these new type of shelters that go in underneath the house catch on and we can do maybe a thousand houses next year, maybe two or three thousand a year after that. They're pretty cool, you know, and they're very affordable. What other things do you got on the go? Uh, I know you have a TV show. And yeah, we're working on a new TV show that's about building a prepper community and I'm going to release the Sizzler on uh, YouTube so people can sign up for it or just see what's coming out. Just plan ahead and yeah. keep in mind that the bunkers are affordable now and not to have one is stupid. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not well, a Especially if you're going to get a $500,000 house. Oh, yeah. What's, what's another $30,000 to have the coolest room in the house that you're going to use? You're going to use it for something. It's, the kids are going to use it for a playroom, you're going to use it for storage, you're going to use it as a vault, you're going to use it for a gun room, wine cellar, whatever, even a guest bedroom. On my website, we, uh, we, on the bomb, we have this uh, YouTube uh, video called the Bombnado. Yeah. We show it with stripper poles <laughs> and <laughs> lavender couches and bedrooms and a hobby room. You can turn them into a little choo-choo train room. You go down there, have your little choo-choo trains and stuff. I mean, I show illustrations of all the ideas that you can turn a bunker into. So it doesn't have to be dead space. It can be- Hell no. That you can no, use. it is not dead space. It's the fun space. Yeah. And, and, and if you have a secret passage, um, it becomes your favorite room because you can have your be only show your best friend. It's like, do you notice anything about this? No. And then you slide a counter, you move something, the floor opens up and there's a staircase that goes down into a bunker. Yeah, that's it's really cool. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Every man's dream, I think. Oh, I think so, too. I mean, how can you not be a man and not want to have a bunker? You know, like that. I mean, come on. All right. Well, hey, man, it was great uh, chatting with you on the channel today, and I look forward to touring the factory one of these days. Anytime. You got a uh, factory in Austin, is it? No, outside of Dallas. Dallas? D Dallas and Los Angeles. Los Angeles is coming in. Yeah. All right. Well, I definitely know a few people, preppers, that I think would... I'd like to get in touch with you, so I'll be yeah, sure. Yeah, just go to com. Yeah, check it out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.